Hi, it's Sunday. <laughs> uh, we're getting Sunday to work. Monday. Let's rock and roll. So it's a uh, Sunday and uh, we have a bunch of orders to pack up. We also have a lot of items to process. So that's what we're doing basically all day. Um, so we're going to do some what's sold later. Uh, Monda's doing a bunch of clothing right now. I'm going to go tackle a bunch of electronics. We have quite the pile to get through. Uh, so stay tuned. Enjoy the video. All right. Welcome to, uh, to the basement. So right now I'm working on getting these uh, three tested. This is a Philips DVD VCR combo unit and then two Panasonic uh, VCR players. Paid six a piece for these two, eight for this one. I'll show you how I test them. So the first thing you want to do with any electronic is just to plug it in just to make sure it works. I can see my reflection on the TV. Um, this is just a Panasonic, uh, the power button, first thing I test, it works. Uh, and then I have to connect it. So I have this old TV. It has a built-in built VCR player and it also has audio video connectivity for the RCA or uh, AV cable. So all I need to do now is match the cables. So. In the back of your VCR, you should have some sort of input or output. Oop. Well, there was a cassette in there and I accidentally hit eject. Anyways, um, you are going to have input output portals in the back. You have to find one that says video out. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but right here it says out on the bottom. So these are the ones that I want to connect to. The colors don't really matter. Uh, you can it does, the colors don't matter. The cable does the same exact thing. So all I'm going to do is plug in the matching um, colors here to the TV. So if I plug in a, a blue cable or a red cable into the yellow, I just have to make sure that that same blue or red is in that yellow. That's what I mean by the color doesn't matter. As long as it's like to like, it'll be fine. So let me plug that in. So I've plugged in my cables here. Again, just matching, make sure that it matches that. And now I know that my uh, portal hit down here is loose. Uh, so what I do is I just jam a random case. In this case, the Spyro the Dragon case. I just jam it in the middle. This is specific to this TV. You don't have to do that. And then we're going to power it on. It gives us a nice blue screen, which is a great start. And then uh, this is a U of M replay tape. I'm not gonna test it with that because I don't know if it actually works. I do know that this speed video uh, cassette or videotape works. I pick up uh, when I see them for free, just for testing. That way I have a bunch ready. So first I wanna make sure it smoothly enters. Step one, it automatically plays. So that's, that's a good start. So now I wanna make sure that you know, all of the functions work. So I'm just gonna to toggle on and off just to make sure that's working. I'm gonna to toggle play just to make sure that's working. And I wanna test the forward, rewind, the stop, eject, make sure that it ejects smoothly. Sometimes what'll happen is they'll, they'll kind of jump out. It receives the cassette smoothly, that's good. It's gonna play, I'm gonna stop, rewind. I can hear it rewinding. I'm gonna stop and play, and then I'm just going to do the same exact thing for forward, reverse, just to make sure. So if I hold the forward, it works. If I hold the reverse, it works. Play works, and final test, I'm gonna stop, fast forward just for a second. You can hear it, right? I hope. Okay, I'm gonna hit play. That's it. So now I know it's working. I never uh, test the record function. Of all the ones we've ever sold, we've never tested that function. Um, and it's worked perfectly fine. We've never had any issues with our VCR. So hopefully that helps you when you're dealing with old VCRs. Same exact technique when you're doing VCR DVD combos. You're just testing both sides, making sure that they both work. All right, I'm on to my second one. Uh, once I, uh, again, I connect it. It 
it doesn't power on. So easy, right? I don't have to do anything else. I can return it. Our Goodwills have a seven day return policy for instant credit. So I'll get my seven bucks back and get this one back to them. So these are all of the items that are ready for photos. Uh, I, we use a lot of these just regular Amazon branded baby wipes to get some of the dirt off of them, the dust, all that good stuff. Here's just a quick example. So all you need to do is just press a little bit, get some of this grime out of there and clean it up. As far as sticker removal, all you need is uh, just a regular hair dryer and uh, just about 30 seconds or less with high heat on a label. And then you should be able to just peel it off relatively easily without leaving a mess and needing to use Goo Gone. So pretty easy trick. Um, learn it from Instagram, share it on Instagram. Uh, good to know. So anyways, we'll clean these up, start taking the pictures and uh, get this pile listed. While Adine's been testing electronics and doing some inventory, here's an update on the clothing pile. This is what's left. And all of this has been photographed. Uh, big focus on getting our jeans and jackets, working through anything left over that we have from that because it is the season where those are going to be selling. So we want to get those up first and foremost. So going to be wrapping this up here pretty quick and then I'll be moving on to the next task. So I finished the clothing, about to count it out and see what I got done today. Forty-three is the final count. It took about three hours. There were some breaks in there though, but with eating, that's about what you can get done. All right, it's uh, it's evening time. Um, yep. If you're still with us, welcome back <laughs> to. Hi, we're gonna go through the weekend sales. We had 17 sales for $1,365. A really good Friday and Saturday and a super slow today, um, which is okay. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to go alternate. Uh, we're going to alternate between the sales based off of what uh, what sold first. So the first thing that sold Friday were these Avant uh, or Advent 3 speakers. Um, I don't know how to show these the best. I'm not going to take them out the packaging because that's going to make my life harder. But I got... Uh, a, a pair of two or a set of these they're definitely vintage usa made um i paid four hundred dollars for about fifteen hundred dollars worth of inventory and this is part of it so we have about 150 dollars into it and they sold for 375 free shipping with the pair uh, going to oregon it's going to be expensive to ship it's probably going to be between 40 and 60 dollars to ship these um, we calculated about $30 into the price for shipping, but they sold within a week and we're very happy with the profit margin. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Yeah. Next thing that sold was this Columbia winter jacket. It's the interchange type, which means that the fleece is uh, able to zip off and you can just use the liner as well. So it's almost like three coats in one. Uh, they sell really well, especially now that it's coming up to colder weather and winter, so we should see more of those sales. It was $10 at our local thrift store, and we sold it for $50. And that's free ship, and we're going to try our best to stuff that into a padded envelope. You know what just clicked for me? I get that me? done. Yes, you can. What clicked for me, what you just said, I thought it was a two-in-one coat, but it makes sense a three-in-one because you can wear two separate ones or together. That's right. I didn't know that. Now I know. Uh, what's next? Ah, Christmas stuff. So, uh, we've sold a decent amount of this. This is the cheapest two. I bundled these up. These are St. Nicholas Square. Uh, this is just a bridge and like a deer and a um, Christmas tree or whatever. Um, I picked these up, the big ones, for about four bucks each, and the little ones were almost thrown in. Um, this set sold for 40 free ship. It's kind of an awkward box, but it should fit in a 12, 12, 8 USPS box, mm -hmm. and it'll ship for about 10 to 12 dollars. So, we'll see, roughly. Yeah, the next one was a just a smaller sale. This is a key to a juicer, and we have twenty five. No, uh, thirteen. We have thirteen dollars into three juicers, and this was just part of one of those. So I don't know, a dollar maybe. Yeah. Uh, and it sold for eighteen dollars, and it'll probably ship for about three bucks. 
and we have plenty of parts left. Uh, this was one of the oddest things. Uh, this is the first time I can, I can find it behind my back. We sold a wig, uh, a used wig. Uh, Gently used. It, yeah, I mean, gently used. It's a Paula Young. Um, that's the brand on it. And so on this box, there's like a description and a color. And anyways, not the greatest buy. We bought two of them for 15 each. And uh, we sold this one for 35 free shipping. It actually might go first class. It's super light. Um, if not first class, it'll ship for like eight bucks. So really not, not great. We'll make like 10 bucks profit on it. Um, but I'm glad to see it gone. It's been sitting for a few months now. And we sold a pair of true religion jeans. This was, uh, Dean found a whole bunch of these at our thrift store, uh, five bucks a pair. We sold these for 40. Yeah, and again, 752 uh, padded flat rate envelope for that. Um, next up. Oh, it's another part. So this is a, we've sold this thing before, and it's funny because later on in this video, you're gonna see more of this kind of stuff. So this is a uh, Oster Regency uh, Kitchen Center. It's actually, it's, people have heard me talk about this on Instagram before. Uh, it's actually quite a fascinating piece because it's a mixer. It actually has an arm that goes here, goes here. So we parted it out. We bought it for 15 bucks at a garage sale. Um, this piece sold for 58 shipped. Uh, it's going to Kentucky and then international. It's going to cost us about 15 bucks to ship it. Maybe about, maybe less. Anyways, uh, it's a mixer and then it's also a meat grinder and it's also a blender like all in one and a food processor. So it's, it's super diverse. Um, this is just the motor um, and the rest of the stuff you'll, you'll see later. So anyways, uh, pretty happy with this flip. And that's the cool thing. We have all the other parts uh, left. With it, I think we sold the, the mixers already for 15. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, next one, also a smaller one. This is the VHS of Beetlejuice, um, the old, I think it's 90s version, 1998. Um, and we got it for practically nothing at the pay what you want that we go to when we're up north. So, pennies into it maybe a dollar it sold for 15 and it uh will ship media mail so we'll ship cheap yeah um next up is a belt so uh, we bought a whole bunch of these I, we went to a barn sale up north as well and um mm -hmm. anyways uh bought like th i think 30 of these brand new belts these are uh, old uh, older um some made in the u.s this one is not it's just the oregon trail premium Armid Ar 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 cord belt uh, for tractors. So this was this is the first of the 30 listed and it sold for 20 bucks free shipping. It'll ship, if not first class, it'll ship for 780, but I'm pretty sure it'll go first class. Yeah, that's the type of thing that people are gonna buy when they need it. So depending on what that demand is at any given time, we might be sitting on them for a while, but we don't have much into them. So. Yeah, about a buck fifty into each. Yeah. Um, yeah, I expect these to sell really slowly for the next like year, year and a half, but they don't take up much space, so that's fine. Next one was a good one. I mean, they're all good, but yeah, I'm gonna grab the camera and just move it closer this way. Hey, look, it's us, but closer. So we sold this uh, Pioneer compact disc player. Plays. It has a 25 CD capacity. We actually found this at Goodwill. It was $13. So we bought it and we sold it for $180. Obviously it's big, it's bulky. It's probably going to be closer to 25, 30 to ship, but only paying 13 still leaves us with a pretty healthy profit on that. Uh, next, Duluth. Uh, nice and simple I, I'm pretty sure I got this online actually um, like auction yeah so I found this uh, seller this is one thing you can always do is you can find you can find people that undervalue items on eBay buy things on eBay and then sell them on eBay like that's a people make a living just sitting and clicking uh, doing that so anyways this came I bought two Duluth items from this one person paid um, I think it was five bucks plus shipping so it ended up being ten or twelve dollars and this one sold for uh, 27 uh, shipped, it'll cost 752 to ship it. So the next sale was another big one. Grab the camera. It mm -hmm. was the other Pioneer. This holds 
300 CDs at the same time. Adeen picked it up off Facebook Marketplace. They only asked 25 for it and we scooped that and sold it for $230. Again, it's going to be a little bit more expensive to ship, probably not more than $30. So again, great profit margin. Yeah, I don't remember which one is going where. One is going to California, which is going to be like 40, and then the other one is going to Wisconsin. That's this one. The big one's going to Wisconsin. Perfect. So yeah. the Wisconsin one, because it's Midwest for us, that one's going to be probably around like 25, and the West Coast is going to be around 40, maybe even 45, mm -hmm. which is fine. Yeah, That's good average, expect. about 30 in the middle. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So those are the two big hitters. And the crazy thing is they both sold on the same day, which which was great. Uh, all right, a, a, a random item. This is a good little find. Uh, Pick up for three bucks. This is one of those things where it's brand new in package. Um, you just have to, you know, there's so many listings of it already. It's a love, love me, but spelled differently for a uh, LG V30, which I assume is a phone. Um, that's the fun thing about eBay. You really don't have to know anything. Um, so this one, uh, three boxes sold for 18 shipped and it will ship um, for, I, I don't know if it's gonna be uh, eight bucks, I guess. Yeah, so in, in reality, it sold for 10 plus shipping. Next is another uh, kitchen part. Again, parting out pieces. This is just a mini processor, so just the bowl, a uh, little one. This is the motor, and it sold for $35, free ship, uh, probably like eight, eight to 10 bucks to ship it. Yep, well, it should fit in a shoebox. Yeah. Next, uh, oh, that's the big one. Just a moment. It's like, that one's too big to get out of the box. So it's it's literally, so the next sale uh, that I'm not gonna show because there's so many pieces to it, it's the uh, Regency Kitchen Center. Um, same as that one that we just sold, but this is actually the complete unit, which includes the food processor part, um, the mixing bowls, the arm, and the um, glass jug for the blender. So all together, Monda found this one on um, Marketplace. Uh, I went out to uh, just like a neighboring village here, picked it up for 35 bucks and sold for 175 shipped. Uh, I don't know where it's going, but it'll cost probably around 20, 25 to ship it out. So we were actually debating on like, okay, it's been sitting for a while, should we part it out because the parts have been selling so well, but we mm -hmm. decided just to hold on and it sold. So uh, very happy with that sale. Yeah. All right, next is this barn silo, it's from the Fisher Price farm set. So no toys or anything, oh, just the silo. That's right. uh, we'll put the roof back on it. Uh, that sold for $19, it's light. So good chance it might actually ship first class. So only a couple bucks to ship it out. And then the last thing was a posh sale. Um, this pair of Chaco shoes, I've never heard of this Chaco. brand. What she said. Uh, anyways, uh, green tennis shoes. Uh, they sold for thirty. They pay for shipping. Uh, we pay an average of six bucks per uh, sneaker when we pick them up at, at Goodwill. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so solid weekend sales. We're gonna pack up uh, most of the like smaller stuff uh, tonight, and then the big stuff I'll pack up tomorrow morning before work. Uh, so again, seventeen sales over thirteen hundred in, in um, total, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Today was a super busy day. Yeah, we spent the day getting ready for more big sales in quarter four. Yeah, for sure. We I don't know, what did you count for your clothing? It's like 43 clothes, and then I took more pictures of shoes or something. Yeah, so. and, and my numbers aren't very impressive at all. I think I have like <laughs> five or six items that I got ready, but I did test a bunch of VCRs. Mm -hmm. I did test a bunch of old technology. Unfortunately, four units are going back to Goodwill, and that's really nice because our Goodwill does give us seven day in-store credit for returns. So we can take that gamble on old technology. And I think the total value of returns is like 35 bucks, which isn't a lot of money, but it's 35 bucks that we can reinvest into more uh, used goods. So, right. um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll probably show you just one or two packing tips at some point, uh, after we're done babbling. So anyways, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. I'll tag on one or two packing tips if you want to check that out uh, with this bigger stuff. Yeah, and if these videos are any value to you, hit the thumbs up button.
We appreciate that. Uh, thanks. Follow us on Instagram as well. I'm not saying goodbye yet because uh, we're going to do some packing, but we'll see you later. See you later. All right. So packaging tip number one, this is that little uh, engine for that little food cluster. It's kind of hard to see because I bubble wrapped it. But I just want to show you that when you're using these shoe boxes, even though they're called shoe boxes, again, they're just USPS priority mailboxes and you can use them uh, for other things than, than shoes, right? It's just the, sh the, the name for them. So anyways, I'm going to pop that open, uh, put a little bit of that white fill paper on the bottom, put the machine in, surround it with white paper and on the top, and that should be plenty. And it should ship for about 8 to $9. So with these ones, we're just putting boxes in boxes. There's already styrofoam in here, and it's the original packaging. So we're going to fill this void space with brown packing paper. And then these are just the free 12 by 12 by 8 boxes from the USPS. You can order them online, and they'll ship them right to your door. So you can see with the stuff on the sides and all the rest of the void space. So it's nice and tight in there. It's not going to rattle around during any travel. And then you just keep it up. Off it'll go. So I'm getting ready to get these uh, Advent speakers uh, ready for shipment. They come with these uh, inserts on the top and bottom, which square around. Um, that definitely helps it stay in place so it doesn't wiggle around. What I'm going to do with them is I'm going to double box them. So these two are going to go together into a bigger box so they ship together. Also, what I'm going to do is take these styrofoam pieces that I got for free and uh, I'm going to reuse them. I'm going to cut them in half. I got four there and I'll slide uh, one on each corner or each side. That way it just gives it a little bit more protection against any heavy dropping and uh, any heavy vibration so that way the speakers don't get damaged quite honestly yeah you know obviously i don't want them to be damaged because it's a financial loss to our business but the other thing too is like these are so rare to find in mint condition i just want them to survive and the buyer is actually going to export them to korea i just want them to make it there because they're so sweet I mean, it's just a part of history. And again, like you can't find this stuff anymore. This is, most of them already have been destroyed or blown. These are like mint condition. So anyways, I want to make sure to get there safely. And then the last thing I am going to do or already did in this one is take craft paper and put it there in the uh, slots. That way it kind of keeps the styrofoam in place. And again, it's just protection against droppage. So I'm going to do that on each one. And then this cap goes back on top. And then if I do the shake test, it's going to be pretty solid in there. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy with that. And this is really good quality old cardboard, which is going to help. So this is where we're going to leave it for tonight. These will be finished. Uh, these three orders and then one other large order will be finished in the morning. See you then. So here are those two Advent speakers. Um, you already saw me making sure that they're secure in here. Now I'm just securing the rest. I put our uh, egg cartons on the sides, a little bit of styrofoam cut out. So I'm just gonna stuff the rest of them with this um, craft paper and that package is good to go. It's gonna be a big box. The packaging continues. This is uh, one of the two Pioneer CD players we sold. And one thing I wanted to let you know is that you know, when you're putting this on a scale, make sure that all four corners are off the ground so you can get an accurate reading. Um, if it's touching or sagging in one corner, that means you're not going to get the right reading on your scale. And that might actually cost you money because FedEx actually runs all their boxes through a conveyor belt laser system that measures and weighs everything. And if you're off, they're going to charge you um, the difference and even more. And these are the other two. These are the speakers and the other CD player already backed up. So this is that kitchen center uh, that we mentioned. So we sold, this is two different sales. We already sold the motor that's already been shipped out. And this is the actual complete set. This is the arm that belongs, you know, right there. This is this piece. It actually has an attachment for a grinder. So that goes this way, the mixing bowls, the mixers, the blender, etc. So we get all this individually bubble wrapped and get that packed up as well. And then we made a couple more sales last night. I'll show you, we'll wrap those up and we'll go over some numbers. All right, got all the big stuff packed up. These are the other three items that sold overnight. First, 
Uh, we paid 10 cents for this uh, vintage shirt, the 1994 Coca-Cola shirt and a Coca-Cola tag. That one sold for 27 shipped. It'll ship first class for about four bucks. This vintage J. Crew um, sweater sold for 27 as well. It'll ship for 7.52. I think it's going to be over a pound. And this big, I'm sorry, this sold for 35. Not sure what I just said, but 35 bucks for the J. Crew and $27 for this giant 26 inch or 24 inch Pikachu. Um, he's gonna go first class or she, I'm not sure what gender Pikachu is. Uh, poly bag on all three, pretty easy to ship. All right, we will conclude it with the numbers. So sales, 14.54 in total. Cost of goods was 284. The most expensive item were the advent speakers. We paid about 150 for them. Shipping was 206 for everything, including some pretty bulky stuff. The most expensive, the speakers shipped to Oregon, which is really far away from us. It cost $46 to ship them. $203 approximating the PayPal and eBay fees, which leaves us 761 net. And we approximate on the high end of the tax bracket of 25%, which is $190 we have to pay in taxes, which leaves us with 571 in the bank. Hopefully those numbers are nice and clear and organized for you. Uh, we do keep track of everything. We've talked about tracking your data uh, several times. Definitely encourage it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something. Until next time.